All right. So Kendrick needs to respond, right? Like he wanted all the smoke and still hasn't said anything. Now, granted, Drake did wait three weeks before he put anything out. But now that he's responded not once, but twice, and this time with a Tupac and Snoop Dogg voice filter, like, come on, Kendrick, what are you doing? Like, what's the holdup? Why are you waiting so long? What's going on? So last night on IG, Drake posted a track with the caption, tailor-made freestyle while we wait on you, I guess, which on first glance might just be him talking shit, right? Like you, you wouldn't think anything too crazy of it. He's going to put out a few, few bars, whatever. But then you listen to it and you hear Tupac's voice. And this voice is urging Kendrick to respond with Kendrick, we need you, the West Coast savior. You seem a little nervous about all the publicity. Fuck this Canadian light skin. Call him a bitch for me, which I mean, coming from Tupac should mean a lot to Kendrick since, you know, Tupac is essentially Kendrick's idol and Kendrick mentions him constantly and how like Tupac came to him in a dream before. Like Tupac is a big part of Kendrick's life. So for him to say this is like, okay, I, maybe I should listen, right? Even if it is Drake using a vo- voice filter. <laughs> but he then goes on to mention that, yo, you can take this whole liking young girls angle if you want to attack Drake, which must be true because it was mentioned on the Joe Budden podcast, which is kind of funny because I don't think Tupac would even mention the Joe Budden podcast. Like he wouldn't have known. I mean, he, he wouldn't have known. <laughs> Or, I mean, it could just be that, like that Dave Chappelle skit, right? Um, anyways, but he then goes on to say, like, or, you know what, you should just go f- fuck his girl, like Pac did. Like, you know, just do something crazy, because this whole snatching chains and burning tattoos line didn't hit Drake that hard. Like, he already addressed it on push-ups, and even here, he's like, bro, like, you gotta do something more. Like, you ain't about that life. Then, this Tupac verse ends out with a callback to Taylor Swift like we heard on push-ups with now you about to give this shit another week and fall back to your homegirl you running numbers up I would have refused which is he's basically saying that he's Kendrick's letting Taylor Swift run the game control his drops and this is why he didn't put out a diss yet which if he's planning on dropping on DSPs and making it a big deal sure but it's a diss track and I don't know that people want to ma- wait that long. Like, you can just throw it on SoundCloud or do what Drake does and just put it on IG. Like, there's so many other ways you could go about it. You don't have to make a huge public deal about it, right? Like, you don't have to make it so big. I mean, sure, I guess if that's what you want, but still, like, why are we waiting so long? And then there's also one final moment of doubt with this verse where he says, you're supposed to be the boogeyman. Go do what you got. Go do what you do. Unless this is a moment that you tell us this is not really you maybe Kendrick really isn't the boogeyman. Maybe he really does just come out every so often, take shots, and then run away for a few years. At least that's what it sounds like they're trying to say here. Then we have a second verse with a Snoop Dogg voice, which for the most is like, hey, I know you haven't been to jail or shot anyone or really done anything violent, but you need to respond to Drake somehow. I passed you the torch out of the House of Blues, and now you're kind of looking a little foolish. Like the Snoop verse doesn't really go as in depth and it doesn't, I don't think it necessarily hits as hard, but again, Snoop is a West Coast legend. He did pass the torch to Kendrick. He did like, he's a big part of that whole upbringing, you could say. So, you know, having Snoop's voice say that is also like, Ooh, okay. Like this is another person that I hold close. Like, I don't know that that's, you know, like it's, it's hard for him. I would imagine like, it obviously is not Snoop or Tupac saying these things because Snoop also posted on IG later, like shortly after that came out. He's like, leave me leave me alone, basically. <laughs> um, but Drake using Tupac and Snoop Dogg's AI or voice filters or whatever gets Kendrick at a gets at Kendrick in a few ways. The first being that they're both West Coast legends trying to push Kendrick to do something. Like, you know, he's they're like, go, go and do something. Like, respond to him. Like these are also two of his idols though that are now starting to doubt his place in the rap conversation. Like, yeah, we get it that you're not necessarily super street and like you're not gonna be Ella Violent or anything, but come on, man. Like you you still a rapper. Like you can still do these things. So it's a little like they're a little concerned, I guess. It also does touch a bit on the conversations around the AI Kendrick response that we've heard and seen come up this past week, which everyone just has like was just questioning like oh is this track ai or is it legit like 
with the whole AI bits from this track. Like there's there's more to it there. Um, then we have Drake's verse, which honestly it doesn't feel like he really wasted a line. Like he mentions how push-ups only took him a couple hours to do, and now that he's had more time, the next one's really gonna spook Kendrick. Like he's really trying to get at him. Like he has stuff to do, but like Kendrick hasn't responded yet. He also reiterates the letting Taylor Swift control his release bit by bringing top into it. But now we got to wait a fucking week because Taylor Swift is your new top. And if you about to drop, she go, she got to approve, which, you know, very much just touching on the pushups line, like top is going to tell you what to do. But now Taylor Swift is going to tell you what to do. Taylor Swift is going to say, all right, now you can drop. But this is also kind of like a, Kind of a sexual reference in that sense because it's like, yo, Taylor Swift is the top now. Like Kendrick's going to be on the bottom. Like Kendrick's got to receive essentially and do what needs to be done as far as compliance goes. He also then touches on how since like that came out, Kendrick's been quiet and it's kind of weird. Like, I mean, we've heard people around Kendrick say like, oh, something's coming, whatever. But obviously nothing from Kendrick. And that's not that weird in the sense because Kendrick is very quiet and to himself, but it is weird because Drake's put out two tracks now and you were the first person to fire. So it's like, come on now. Um, and it's like, are you waiting for this to die down? Like Drake's not going to let you. It's It sounds like he's going to give you another week by saying, I guess you need another week to figure out how to improve. But I don't know. Still weird that you're the one who threw the shots first Drake did take three weeks, but if you're the first person to shoot, like you probably should have something ready to go or be willing to just keep going like kind of quickly. Right. He then ends out the verse by saying or letting everyone else that was involved with uh, we don't trust you and we still don't trust you. Like, hey, whenever you're going to drop something, I'm going to get at you, too. And then in the outro, Drake shouts out Taylor Swift again and acknowledges that even he would move his project release if she was dropping. And he's also then goes on to try to imagine what Kendrick's doing right now. Like he must be in his New York apartment, like writing hella hard. Like he, he must have some quintuple entendre, right? If it's going to take him this long. And honestly, I feel like if Kendrick doesn't have something like that at this point, like Drake's just going to continue to clown on him. And I'm sure a lot of other people are also going to look at him kind of weird. Like, yo, you took this long to write this? Like, hmm, I don't know about that. Overall, though, I do feel like this was a pretty solid second response. Like, or another like, hey, come on, let, let's do something. Like, Because, you know, Drake pulling the AI Pac and Snoop is crazy, but it made sense. Like, these are people who are close to him, people that he holds dearly. He, if they are coming at you too, come on, dog. I honestly keep going back and forth with this whole beef thing in terms of how important it is and whatnot. But at the end of the day, I think the drama and just being curious uh, of what they have to say is really what keeps bringing my attention back. Like, but at the end of the day, Kendrick needs to respond for sure. Like that, that needs to have been happen by now, but who knows? We got another week at least. <laughs> Maybe he'll respond in a couple hours and I have, I'll be back on camera again. But in the meantime, let me know in the comments below what you thought of this track. If it was necessary, if it was unnecessary, if you think you went a little far by bringing in AI and what that whole conversation looks like. Uh, and while you're down there, like and subscribe to see more rambling and content like this. Thank you for watching and please stay safe out there.